Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard you guys are doing two musicals this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already was in three musicals already. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Leader of the pack and to draw the room. No way. Yeah. What is the matter with that? Why is there? Okay, first of all, if you don't know how to do 2D and 3, that means you didn't learn from the three tables in number one. So I think we better discuss that. Okay, so here. Let's discuss that before we even do this. So, two table, true, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. Now, we already know the conditional statement is, what is, have we memorized the true table for this yet? True, false, true, true. Now, turn your attention to problem 1D, P and not Q. What did it come out to? What? It's true. Just look at the video. P and not Q, what did it come out to? False, true, false, false. false. Now, what do you notice about that? It's exactly the opposite of that, which means it's the rhymes with bugation. It's the negation. If something has exactly the opposite truth table, that means this is the negation of that. So, oh, the negation of a, of a conditional statement is an and statement. And that's how you do problem 2D and 3. Now, does that clear it up now? I still don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Park. Okay, look, let me show you something. What did we learn yesterday? P implies Q is logically equivalent to what? The contrapositive, but then what's the other one? Remember there are three? Not P or Q, right? Did we do this one yesterday? Plus anyway, look, where's not P or Q? Hey, you did E, look. E, e, didn't that come out to the, the, the conditional statement? Now, if you want to negate a conditional statement, watch this. See, you guys got to make connections here. Isn't that the same thing as negating this because they're the same? And do we know how to distribute a negation sign to an or statement? Yeah, you distribute to the first one and you get what is not, not P. And then what is not Q? And then you change the order and that. See, it all makes sense. So the negation of a conditional statement is P and not Q. That's got to be in here. Okay, now let's do 2D. Then. Let's just do it anyway. Even though I explained it to you right now. You're given this conditional statement. Right? Okay, so in problem 2D, write the negation of it. Okay, so this is like box implies triangle. If the letters are going to confuse you. Here, box implies triangle. What is the negation of that? It's going to be box and not triangle. Right? So the negation of this is going to be box and not triangle. That's how you negate a conditional statement. It's an and statement. And then when you do number three, it's the same thing except different. Write the negation of the following statement. So, for all real numbers x and y, comma, if x is greater than y, then x squared is greater than y squared. Now, what kind of statement is this? Look at the. It's universal. Do we know? What's the form of a universal statement? For all box, comma, oval, right? How do you negate that? There exists box such that not oval. So you have to negate this. Now, what kind of statement is this? When you have something in one something. It's a conditional statement. Do we, did we learn how to negate a conditional statement? Yes, right here. It's box and not triangle. So if you have box implies triangle, the negation of that is going to be box and 
not triangle. X squared is less than or equal to Y squared. See, so it doesn't matter what the words are. You just follow the form. You guys get it? Just follow the form. So some of you got to put this in your memory brain. Okay. The negation of a conditional statement is an end statement. You cannot make up your own now. That means the two tables are completely opposite from one another. Okay, and then number three, oh, we did that one. And then number five. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> okay, now, did you do it the good way or the bad way? I'm just wondering. That, that's why I put this problem here, to see if, if you're thinking or not thinking. I don't know if I'm thinking, Mr. Park. Q and R, if and only if, not P and not S. Okay, now it says P is true, Q is false, R is true, and S is true. What is the true value of this? Come on, 50 50 chance. So just go with true. Look at the bottom, it makes the chances better. <laughs> anyway, it says R is true, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Not R is. Not R is false. And then it says P is true. Now, if you have one false and one true with the biconditional, what is that going to be? Remember, if they're different, it's false. And and does it even really matter what that is? If you have an and statement and one of them is false, doesn't that mean this whole thing is false already? See, this is the kind of thinking you gotta do. You don't have to figure out anything. Now, what kind of statement is this though? This is a conditional statement. If you know the first part is false, do I even have to figure out this part right here? No, because if you have a conditional statement, the only time it's false is when the first one is true and the second one is false. So if the first one is false, the whole thing is true already. Did you guys do that or did you actually figure out all that stuff? You don't want to answer, yeah? No, th there's a reason why I put these problems on to, to make you think. Like, once you figured out this is false, it doesn't matter what that is already. The whole thing is true. Oh, now I get it. Okay, and then number... Wait, turn 12, 13, 14. Didn't I show you guys this yesterday? If you don't answer, as usual. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, number 12. It says... Write a logical expression to describe each network. Okay, I'm just going to look at, I'm not going to draw the picture again. Now look, first you start with P and Q. Now how are P and Q connected? Look right there. Look, are you looking at the picture? They go together in what? And, and then it gets negated. Woo! And then or, what is it or with? What's going into the other or? Not R. And then that whole thing gets negated. That's all you have to do. What, 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 what went on with that? And then number 13, okay, you start with P. What happens with P? It gets negated, and then it gets ORed with, look at the other input, it's Q. And then both of these get ended with, now look at N. What, hap what does it get ended with? You gotta go back to the beginning. Go all the way back to the beginning. What's the first thing? Not Q and R, but then that gets negated, and that's it. And then number 14, it says, show that the following network is functionally equivalent to the network of question 13. So first of all, you gotta figure out number 14. Number 14, okay, so you got Q gets ORed with what is that? Not P and not R, like that. So it says, show that this and this are equivalent. Now there's two ways to do it. Well, if you look at that, bo that the bottom, didn't I tell you how to do it? One way is you make a true table for this, and then you make a true table for that, and they come out exactly the same. How many people did that? Or what's the other way? Doesn't it say on the bottom? Or there's no, where's the, oh no, it's not on the bottom. What does the answer say? <laughs> yesterday, okay, remember yesterday's homework? Did we learn how to, like, what's logically equivalent to this? Remember? 
when you have Q or something and something. Yeah, you can take this QR and kind of distribute it. Isn't this logically equivalent to Q or not P and Q or not R? Remember? Yesterday's? Oh my goodness. If not, okay, if you don't remember it, then just make a true table for this and then make a true table for that and then you're done, except it takes a while, right? But if you do this, now look at that. Is this the same thing as that? Almost. Okay. Now, if you have an or statement, does it matter which one comes first? Can I switch it like that? Is A or B the same thing as B or A? Yes, it is. And then over here, see how this got a negation sign there? Can I factor out a negation sign? You know the reverse of De Morgan's law? So if I factor out a negation sign, what's going to be inside it? Not Q and R. And is that the same thing as that? Yep. And so instead of making two really long truth tables, just do this. Use the things that you learn. No, but I like doing stuff the long way, Mr. Park. Okay, then make the truth tables. Yeah. So when you factor out the negation, the or turns into an and? Yeah, okay, remember De Morgan's law. What, what's that? Not P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q, right? So it's just like going the other direction, right? Yeah. That's the Morgan's Law. Okay, any other questions on this? Okay, so now we, now we get to learn good stuff. Oh, by the way, don't forget, we have a quiz Tuesday. The test will be Thursday. And then this is what the computer department told me. If you want to watch the videos on your iPad in school, you have to use Chrome. You guys know what that is? You've got to get the Chrome app. So you got to use that as your browser instead of Safari. Or delete your YouTube app. Do you guys have the YouTube app? You don't want to delete it, yeah? Okay, then you got to use Chrome. But then if you don't watch the videos at school, it really doesn't matter anyway, right? Is at home, you, it's not go off. Okay, what are we learning today? Let's see. Oh, argument, argument, good. Fire, bad. Okay, today we learn about arguments. What the heck is an argument? Okay, let me show you the most famous argument in logic. Right here. If P, then Q. P, therefore Q. If you do your homework, then I will pay you five dollars. You did your homework. What can you? What's a logical conclusion? I'm going to pay you five dollars, right? So this is what a valid argument means. Valid. If this is true and this is true, then that will be true. That's what a valid argument is. So, you guys, have you guys seen things like this? You guys, you guys know that this symbol means therefore? Have you guys seen that before? If this is true and this is true, then this will be true as well. Okay, that's called a valid argument. Okay. Now, this line over here, these things above the line, these are called the premises. This is on the note, people. And then this thing here is called the conclusion. Now, in tonight's homework, I'm going to give you an argument, and then you have to tell me whether it's valid or invalid. Okay? Now, if you look at your notes, there are three well ways to tell if an argument is valid. One is, what's the first one? What does it say? Whenever the premises are true, the conclusion will be true. Okay? So what you do is you make a truth table. Okay, so this is probably the simplest way. So here's the first premise. Here's the second premise. I'm just going to put a double line to separate it from the conclusion. So what you do is you just make a truth table for these statements here. Okay, do we have these memorized? 
What is P implies Q? True, false, true, true. What is P? True, true, false, false. And Q is always going to be true, false, true, false. Okay. So you make a true table for, now if you had 20 premises, then, then you would just have 20 of these. Okay. But this is a simple one. You only got two premises and one conclusion. Now, whenever the premises are true, the conclusion must be true every single time. Now look at look at this true table. These are the two premises. What line are they both true? Or line or lines, because sometimes it's more than one line. In what line are the both premises true? In the first line. And in that in that case, does the conclusion come out to true? Yes. So therefore, this is a valid argument. Whenever the premises are true, the conclusion comes out true. Therefore, it's a valid argument. Now, let's look at an invalid argument so you can see the difference. If P, then Q. Q, therefore P. If you do your homework, then I will pay you $5. You got paid $5. Therefore, can you say you did your homework? Not necessarily, right? I mean, if you just put in words like that. But just to see why this argument is invalid, let's make a true table, just like here. So you put the first premise here, you put the second premise there, you make the double bar and put the conclusion over here. Okay, make a true table. This one is true, false, true, true. Q is true, false, true, false. And P is true, true, false, false. Now, which lines or lines of the true table do we have both premises being true? Line one and line three. And in both cases, does the conclusion come out true? No, right there. See, if this was true, then that would be a valid argument. But if there's just one case where the conclusion comes out false, then we say that this argument is invalid. So that means don't, you, just, you shouldn't think about it that way because it's, it's not logical. But see, this is, this is a valid argument. You guys, you guys see the difference between the two? Okay, so basically we're going to deal with valid arguments. We really don't care about invalid arguments because we're not thinking logically if you use that. Okay, let's look at another one. I'm going to erase this. This is all in your notes, by the way. This is the second most famous. Oh, by the, by the way, there's a name for this one. Oh, I erased it. If P, then Q. P, therefore Q. Modus ponens. Ponens. Modus ponens. Who takes Latin here? Somebody must take Latin. What does this mean? I, I, I don't know any. I, I took French in high school. Ponens. Ponens. <laughs> okay, never mind. We don't know. We don't know what it is. Although I thought I, thought I read somewhere it means like method of placement or something. Modus is method. Sure. How many people take Latin here and you don't know basic words? What about ponens? Does that mean placement? Sure. It might. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't brought that up. I'm sorry I brought it up. Okay, here's the next argument. Okay, this is the next most famous argument in logic. If P then Q, if Q then R. Therefore, no, come on, I think you guys can figure out. If you do your homework, then I will pay you $5. If I give you $5, then you will spend it all on candy. So what can you conclude from that? If you do your homework, then you're going to spend all the money you get on candy. That's kind of dumb, those words. See, that's the thing about it. See, it's just the meaning of the words. You want to be able to solve these problems without putting, having to put words in there. Okay? Anyway, is this argument valid? Does it make sense to you? Yeah, but even then, but some of you don't think logically, so how do you, even if it makes sense to you, it might not be valid, right? So how do we determine if this argument is valid? We need to make a truth table. So here's the first premise, P implies Q. Here's the second premise, Q implies R, double bar, and then the conclusion, P implies R. We need to make a truth table for this. Now, notice that there are three statements, P, Q, and R, so there's going to be eight lines in this truth table. 
Now, are you guys good and ready after doing all the homework the last several days? Can you guys see when you have an eight line truth table, what is P going to be? True, 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 false, 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 false. What is Q? True, true, true false, false, true, true, false, false. And R? True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, you got that in your head? Okay, now, what is P implies Q then? Okay, if you can't see it in your head, we make the training wheels. Go, go to, don't be afraid. If you have to make training wheels, make the training wheels. Okay, here's the training wheels. True, 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 false, 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 false. You know, because some people, they just need to have the training wheels. What is Q again? True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then the last one's going to be true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Correct? Some people just can't see it in their head. They need, a, they need a visual picture. Okay, now, P implies Q. First line. True. 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 False. False. And then you don't even have to think already. It's all trues, right? Because remember, in a conditional statement, once the first one is false, it's true already, right? We just talked about that seven minutes ago. The only time a conditional statement is false is when the first one is true and the second one is false. Okay, now, Q implies R, so you look at these two lines. Q implies R. True, false, true, 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 false, true, true. Okay, and then finally, P implies R, so you gotta look at these two. So look at these two right there. Go! True, false. When the first one is true, when the second one is false, it's false. True, false, and then the rest will be true, right? Once the first one is false, it's true already. That's a conditional statement. Okay, now, these are the two premises, and what lines are the premises two? Line one, line five, line seven, and eight. And in those four lines, does the conclusion come out true every single time? Yes, so therefore this is a valid argument. Now don't get that mixed up with true because every year they say, oh, the argument is true. No, that, that's not. Statements are true or false. Arguments, which are made up of statements, are either valid or invalid. There's a difference there. Okay, now these are the two most, and this is called the law of syllogism if you look in your notes, or some books call it the law of transitivity because it doesn't it remind you of the transitive property of equality? What's that? Do you guys even know your properties from... Okay, let's go back to algebra one. A plus B equals B plus A. What is this called? <laughs> the commutative property of addition. <laughs> A times B equals B times A. That's the commutative property of multiplication. Are you serial? A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. That's called the associative property of addition. Do I have to show you the associative property of multiplication? And then the, the transitive property of equality says that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Doesn't that kind of remind you of that? Oh boy. Okay, what if, let's just call it the law of syllogism, like it says in the notes anyway. Why did I even bring up that transitive? The law of transitivity. Okay, now we're gonna use these two famous arguments. So now, see, this is this is how you gotta think. If this is true and this is true, what would be a logical conclusion? That's that's what you gotta figure out. Okay. So here we go. We'll start off really easy. P implies Q. Q implies R. P, therefore, what? What can I conclude? So, if these three premises are true, what would be a logical conclusion? So, this is like really easy now. So, if you look at the first two, the law of syllogism says what? If P implies Q and Q implies R, then P implies R. 
And but then Modus Ponens says that if gorilla implies banana, gorilla, therefore, banana. Do you get that? Oh, you guys think you're good now? Okay, well, let's see. Okay, P or Q, not P. Therefore, what? Pick it up a notch here. Now, see, what you want to do is you want to use modus ponens and the law of syllogism. Okay, so this is where you got to know something. Hey, isn't this logically equivalent to something? What did we, what did we learn yesterday? A conditional statement is logically equivalent to either the contrapositive or the, that or statement, right? Let me write it down again. And I'm not going to use letters because this might confuse you. Box implies triangle is logically equivalent to, what did we learn yesterday? Not box or triangle, remember? Okay, look at your notes. It says important equivalences. This is one of them right there. Oh, so anytime you have an or statement, you can replace it with a conditional statement. And how do you do it? What, what's the pattern here? What's the pattern? You negate the first and leave the second one alone. Look, you need, if you want to change conditional to or, or the other way around, look, just negate the first and leave the second one alone. That, that's how you do it. Just look at the form. So can I replace this with this if they're logically equivalent? Yeah, they mean exactly the same thing. But then now, can I apply modus ponens? Gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Do I have to bring in other animals for you to get it? And fruits and vegetables. Okay, let's do another one. P implies Q, not Q. Therefore, can I apply modus ponens right now? Rhymes with mo. No. However, what did we learn? Any conditional statement is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. So I can replace it with the contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this? Not Q implies not P. Now can I apply modus ponens? Yes. Gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. How are you getting the hang of it? Oh, you just think you're good now. Let's kick it up a notch. Let's kick it up a notch. Okay, I'm trying to think here. Uh, P or Q. Gosh, I can't think. I'm getting old. Okay. Nah, this one's not that difficult anyway. So what's the first thing you should do? When you see an or statement, what should you do? You know what? No, no. You know what? I'm going to change the problem. I'm going to change it to an and statement. What am I doing? What did I just do? I don't even know what I just did. I think I did something wrong. Yeah, whatever. We'll see if it works out. I don't know. Okay. So the first thing, what can I, what can I do with this? What, what, if you have a negation outside an as statement, what did we just learn? Can I distribute it? Yeah, yeah what rule was that called? It's called the Morgan's Law. You don't have to know the name, but just be able to do it. So if I distribute the negation side here, what are you going to get? No. Not P or Q. See, that's what I had to do the first time. Yeah? See if I just kicked it up a notch by going back once then. And then whenever you have an or statement, I can replace it with a conditional statement, right? How? We just you, neg you negate the first one, leave the second one alone. See, so this is logically equivalent to P implies Q. Okay, now what? Now what do I do? I think I think I did something wrong. Now I gotta change this. Well, can I use the law of syllogism with these two here? Okay, what is that? Look, A, A implies B, B implies C. What can I conclude from these? A implies C. See how this one, they got to like link up? Can I apply the law of syllogism here? No. 
So what do I do? What, what can I do with this? Any conditional statement is logically equivalent to the contrapositive. So contrapositive is this. I just made up that word. Q implies not R. Now look at these. Look at this and this. Can I use the law of syllogism now? Yes. Gorilla implies banana. Banana implies armadillo. So then what? Gorilla implies armadillo. But then gorilla, therefore, armadillo. You guys get it? Yeah, so all you gotta know is modus ponens and the law of syllogism, and then you and then you can figure out you can figure out what should be a logical conclusion. Now, if you look at tonight's homework though. You look at tonight's homework. Okay, there are some there, but then, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Park. I see words. Look at the first one. Look at number three. It is raining outside if Kimo is studying. If he has found a day, Kimo is happy. Kimo is studying hard. If Kimo is happy, then it is not raining. <laughs> so, if those four premises are true, what would be a logical conclusion? So what should you do if you're going to apply what we learned today? You symbolize those words. You symbolize them. Or do you just think about them? I just told you. No, you symbolize them. Okay, somebody tell me what the first sentence was again. What? <laughs> no, no. Turn, I like to read it upside down. Okay, now I'll look. <laughs> it is raining outside if chemo is studying. Okay, what do you want to call raining outside then? R. Because it's R for rain. You can pick whatever you want. You can call it A if you want. And chemo is studying. What do you want to call that? S. Okay. So, it is raining outside if chemo is studying. How do you symbolize that? Is it R implies S? Or is it S implies R? Or it doesn't matter. It matters, people. It matters. So which one is it? It is raining outside if chemo is studying. So is it A or B? It's this one right here. Because the if comes before that, right? Okay, next one. If he has found the date, chemo is happy. Okay, what do you want to call it if he finds a date? D, and then what? We want H for happy? Okay, so how do you symbolize that? If he finds a date, then he is happy. Yeah. If he finds a date, then he won't happy. Okay. Next one. I'm just doing the problem for you. I fell into your web of deception again. Kimo is studying hard. S. If Kimo happy, then it is not raining. If Kimo happy, then not raining. Okay, so if these four premises are true, what would be a logical conclusion? Now tell me, before we even start, let's see how much you learned today. Is the answer going to be just a single statement, or is it going to be another conditional statement? How do you know? Because of this. See, because of this, that means you're going to apply modus ponens, right? Modus ponens is gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Right? But it, in order to get a conditional statement as your conclusion, look, gorilla implies banana. Banana implies apple. Apple implies orange. Therefore, okay, just say P implies S. Yeah, I can't remember what they mean. <laughs> See, so in order for the conclusion to be a conditional statement, that means all of the premises have to be conditional statements. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so how do we figure out what it is? Now look, look, look how modus ponens is. Gorilla implies banana, gorilla. See, if you're gonna have gorilla, that means you need, you need to start it with gorilla. So since you see an S here, you want, and you have three conditional statements. The first one, you wanna have S imply something. Do I have it? Yeah, it's right there. S implies R. Now if you wanna use the law of syllogism, then the next conditional statement needs to be R implies something, right? And where do I, where do I see that? Right there. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. Well, then contrapositive it, right? What's the contrapositive of this? 
not H. And then, if you want to use the law of syllogism again, then you need not H imply something. Where can I get that? A contrapositive of this one. So based on these three, what can you conclude? S implies not D, but S. Therefore, not D. So Timo has not found the date then. I just did the whole dark problem for you. That's shameless. You guys are just shameless, yeah? No, Mr. Parker, we're going to do it on our own. No, no, just go ahead and just do the whole thing. That's just shameless. Now, if you look at your notes, there are three ways to prove that an argument is valid. I already showed you one by making a true table. Whenever the premises are true, the conclusion is true. But there is also, there's two other ways. What does the second one say? I can tell you what it says. You guys got to read it. Doesn't it say like method one, method two, method three, or something like that? If the conjunction of the premises implies the conclusion is a tautology, then the argument is valid. Right? Yes or no? Okay, so there are several terms you need to know there. Okay, let's go back to modus ponens. P implies Q, P, therefore Q. Okay, I already showed you the first way on how to show that it's valid, okay? The other way is to show that if the conjunction of the premises, okay, first of all, you gotta, you gotta know what they're talking about here. What are the premises? These are the premises. Conjunction. Now, what does conjunction mean? Did we talk about this yesterday? Disjunction and conjunction? It's on the video, people. I'm just going to go back there. What does conjunction mean? Did I show you this yesterday? <coughs> Disjunction means or. <laughs> this is the way we do it on the math theme. Conjunction means and. Did I show you this yesterday? Oh, I did then. Okay, so the conjunction of the premises. What does that mean? Here's the first premise. Here's the second premise. What does conjunction mean? And. Okay, if the conjunction of the premises implies the conclusion, that's the conclusion right there. If this statement is a tautology, okay, now what the heck is a tautology? That never came up yet, but it's in the notes. What is a tautology? That means when you make the true table, it comes out true every single time. That's what a tautology is. In fact, on your homework last night, was there a problem where it just came out true every single time? That's why you're supposed to learn. Like, hey, it's, hey, a statement comes out true no matter what. Isn't that kind of amazing? Well, it's called a tautology. What do you call a statement that comes out false every single time? It's called a contradiction. Man, you guys have the notes and you still pay for them. Okay, so if this statement, if you make a true table for this, and it comes out to a tautology, that means true every single time, then therefore this argument will be valid. You get it? In fact, Mr. Park, we did this on last night's homework. Didn't you? Should look at your homework. Wasn't this one of the problems? You got him? It was! See, that's how I write problems, people, so that you guys learn. Mr. Park, I have a hard time learning. I can memorize and regurgitate. But that's not math, regurgitating. You guys want me to give you a recipe, is that what it is? You want a recipe. You see this problem, you do it like this. Okay, that's not mathematics, that's cooking. We are here to learn mathematics. Like, look. Here's the problem, here's the solution. If you want, I can give you a recipe, but there's only one way to do it, but that's not mathematics. Mathematics is, oh, there's lots of ways of getting the solution. Ooh, some of you do this, it takes a long time, yeah? But of course, what? The best way is just to do it in the most efficient way possible, but in order to do that, you gotta know mathematics. You, gotta know, you, have, you have to have a lot of tools. Oh my goodness, okay, we don't have time. I can't teach you the third one today. So we're just gonna have to do it tomorrow. We run out of time. So what is the third way? What does it say? Saturday. What? Saturday. When I say tomorrow, it means Monday. 
Tuesday. It means Tuesday. It means the next class. No, I forget what I was talking about. Thank you. Indirect proof. Oh yeah, the third way is called indirect proof. What the heck is that? Well, I guess you're gonna have to wait till Tuesday for that. Or here, here's a, here's a better way. How about read the notes? Wait, here's another way. How about look at last year's video on indirect proof? Because you notice that I'm just replacing last year's ones with the new ones. How about that's not gonna happen. I'll just wait the Tuesday to part. Oh, how about going to the Khan Academy? You like the Khan Academy? I've never seen the Khan Academy. But is the guy explained good? Pretty good. 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 Okay, so don't forget quiz Tuesday. So take the quiz at the very beginning of college. here at the first day of school. Yeah. So what is the quiz? We, I am not going to quiz you on something we haven't discussed yet. So since we take the quiz at the beginning of class, what is the quiz going to be on? Which worksheet or worksheet? Is it going to be on the first one? Yes. What about the second one? Yes. What about the third one? No. no, because we haven't discussed it yet. Although if you want me to, I can put some problems on there. Yeah. No, you don't want me to. Okay, it's on the first two worksheets. I'm